Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max and this is the channel where we show you as a new EV buyer how to, well, do everything. How to navigate this world, how to charge your car and more. So there's more videos to come, but today we're at an EVGO DC fast charging station and we're gonna show you how to get your car charging on one of these. So the first step to knowing whether or not you can even charge at one of these stations is figuring out if your car is fast charging capable. In this case, my colleague Ryan Chevy Bolt has what's called CCS or combined charging system. So it's this little circle and these chunky pins that accept direct current DC energy. So some cars only have this little circle. Uh, if your car has one of these, I'm sorry, you're probably gonna need to find something else like a charge point. We'll have videos on that slower charging on this channel in the future. But this car has CCS, so it's fully capable. However, not every car has CCS. There are two other standards. So let me show you the other stuff going on at EVGO. So I just showed you CCS on the Chevy Bolt. Many popular electric cars have this now. Then you've got Tesla. In this case, this station has a slightly lower power Tesla charger, unfortunate, but you do have a cable for that. And then this big chunky blue cable handle, that is for vehicles with Chadmo. In the US here, that's basically just the Nissan Leaf. But if you have a Nissan Leaf, you're in luck. Uh, EVGO can help you. So they've got fast charging of every kind available. As long as your car does take direct current, these stations work. So let's show you how to activate them. So the quickest way to activate at EVGO is actually just with a credit card. You don't even need an app installed on your phone. You don't need any special account. Super convenient. So what I've got is my credit card pulled up. I've parked the bolt here. So depending on where your car is with its charging port, if it's in the front or back where the station is, you're gonna have to park appropriately. These cables aren't very long. So here's the bolt that's parked and uh, we have our CCS thing. We're gonna open this orange flap. Your car might have different kinds of flaps. Make sure everything's open so you expose that plug and now we are going to uh, I believe just plug in first and then we're gonna activate with a card so here's my big CCS cable like I said these aren't particularly long there's some flexibility but they're very heavy so be careful when handling them especially in the cold I'm gonna click this guy into place you'll hear a locking sound your car will make a confirmation now if I go over here I can look at the screen and uh, it gives us the option here right paying by credit card. That's what we're doing today. So I've got my credit card and I'm gonna try just tapping it. Uh, if it supports it, yep, it does. Uh, if your card is swipe or chip, then you can do that too. It's authorizing, it's approved, and let's see, no charge, charge maybe. You might get some mixed messages. These stalls have interesting uh, software. Payment authorized though, that looks good. It's connecting to the vehicle. All right, so that took a little bit of time. It might take like up to a minute, but it does say connection successful. That's great. It's sh showing us, this is what I love about EVGO, a ton of nerdy info. So if you wanna know all the kilowatt hours going in your car, you got that. But most importantly, I think for most of us, dollars, right? It's showing us the estimated cost to charge. But yeah, that is how to activate with the card on EVGO. Pretty simple. It does take a little bit to activate, but in terms of not needing an app on my phone, not needing an account, I thought that was pretty frictionless. So with this stall, at least, it worked well. Let's show you now how to activate with the app. All right, so the most important part to getting started is getting that app set up. So if you have an iPhone, you're gonna wanna find your app store on your home screen or search it with Spotlight. If you have a Google or an Android phone, you're gonna wanna find the Google Play Store. So I'm gonna open these app stores and what I've done is in the search box, I've typed in EVGO and you're gonna find their official app. Uh, it looks like they're actually paying to promote it. So pretty easy to find. I've got EVGO here. So I'm gonna install it on both phones. There I am installing it on the Android phone uh, and then on iPhone similar process. You might have to sign in with your Apple ID. So I'm going to do that now and get it downloaded. Okay. So once you get the app downloaded on either choice of your phone platform, you're just going to open the app. So we're going to open it up and I'm going to use my iPhone from now on. It'll be the same regardless of which phone you have. So I don't have an account. So I'm going to hit let's go and we're going to start making an EVA go account. So I'm going to hit sign up here uh, and then we'll just enter our information. So let's do that. Okay. So when you're signed into the app, you've made your account, you're going to see this map screen. This will be useful later, but let's start with just adding payment info, right? So you hit this little hamburger guy in the top left and then go to payment and billing. Tap that, then you're gonna go to payment method. And you can see Ryan's got some saved cards, but I'm just gonna add a new one or pretend to. We're gonna select credit or debit card. So then from here on, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Just enter your credit card number. It'll ask you for CVV. Um, go on with that and then you just add your card. 
Let's say you're the kind of person who just, you don't want to use this phone app too frequently. You'd rather have a physical card. I actually do want to show you a nice kind of convenient thing you can do with EVgo. If you hit the hamburger and you hit program cards, you can actually sign up to have them send you an RFID card in the mail. So you'll get like a credit card style thing that you can tap to their stations. We're not going to include any more of that in this video, but if you want to do that for the future, that's a nice little shortcut. Another thing with the app, we're using pay as you go today. We're not using any special subscription with EVgo, but if you go in that hamburger menu and you go to plans, they actually have, honestly, I think pretty convoluted system of plans and subscriptions. We're gonna have a dedicated video later on this channel going over uh, payment and chargers, how they bill you. But just know this, for most electric cars, I would reasonably expect to pay between 10 and $20 to fast charge uh, on an EVgo station uh, with the pay as you go plan, what we're using today. If if you charge frequently at these guys, maybe consider one of these premium plans, which we'll go over much more in depth in another video. Okay, so now for the goods, right? Charging with the app. So we've actually parked at a stall. I'm gonna have my cameraman show you uh, that we're at Myrtle right now. So the nice thing about EVgo is they name all their chargers. They make it super easy. There's no numbers to remember. We're at Myrtle. Why is that important? Let me show you. So I'm in the app. I've zoomed in here to the charger we're next to. We'll have another video on actually how to route these chargers and find them. But we see this EVgo charger uh, in the Lark Ridge Shopping Center. So I'm selecting it. Uh, and then I'm gonna choose Myrtle because we just saw that's where we're parked. So Myrtle 100 kilowatt station, plenty for our bolt today. That's what we're gonna activate. Uh, by the way, I should mention one more thing. This station's green, it shows these green guys. Green's good. If you see a connector that's red, that means it's busy or offline, so you can't use it. But in this case, we can use Myrtle. So I'm gonna hit CCS combo because we're in a bolt and use a CCS. Uh, and then it says plug in to confirm your session. So let's do that. So first things first, I'm gonna to wanna to open the charging port on my vehicle. And if your vehicle has different kinds of flaps, it will just make sure everything's open. In this case of the bolt, it's just this orange flap. CCS connector is exposed. I'm gonna take the handle. I might have to press down this button, then I can just slide it out of the stall and then I can handle it into here. I can click it into place with a satisfying lock. The vehicle's gonna make a noise. Um, and then on the app, we can just hit start charging. You can see that it says connecting to vehicle on the charger screen. Uh, so it's letting us know that it's getting prepared. And if I look back on my phone screen, charger's preparing. So this process might take a bit. Sometimes it's a little bit slow to activate, but hopefully it's all good. One quick tip also, while you're here, let's say something gets stuck, you have an error, you can always just force quit the app and relaunch it. That's different on every phone, but an iPhone, you swipe up and you would swipe this app up to get rid of it, but I'm not gonna do that today. Looks like our connection has been successful. So the vehicle is charging. Um, it's letting us know on the screen. We have all our information there, the kilowatt hours that have gone to the car, how long our charging session is, and even the estimated cost. Right now, it can't predict that yet, it looks like, but you will see that in the app for your billing, of course, as well. And one of my favorite things about EVgo is they kind of mirror everything that the charging screen shows on their app. This, honestly, I think pretty cool interface. It shows you what you're gonna be billed. It shows you the current kilowatts going into your car, the total kilowatt hours that have been delivered. And then if you wanna be a nerd like us, then you can swipe over here and see your vehicle's charging curve. So EVgo just gives you all the goods with their information. And then of course, that very important timer on screen. Now in this case, at this stall, they have a 60 minute session limit. I think it's important to mention that because a lot of times with EV charging, you don't wanna hog the charger. Let's say your vehicle gets to a high state of charge, like 80, 90%. Maybe you're going on a road trip and you need all that range, that's fine, but do be aware that the higher your vehicle's state of charge, the slower it's gonna charge. So when you plug in and you're almost empty, your vehicle's gonna charge much quicker. But as you kind of get near the top of that battery, it charges slower, it kind of tapers. Okay, regardless of how you activate it, whether you used a credit card or the app, stopping a charge is the same process. So this screen here is actually a pressure sensitive touchscreen. That means sometimes they're not particularly sensitive. So let's say it goes to this screen, you don't know what to do. In this case, choose your connector. So we're on the CCS charger. We're gonna tap CCS. You might have to press kind of hard like an old ATM. It's a pressure sensitive touchscreen. So there you see, right, that's our uh, charge settings. We can stop our charge. So we're gonna do that. Let's say we've gotten to what we need. I'm hitting that, stop charge. It's gonna ask us to confirm we're ending our session. There'll be a little bit of processing time. You'll hear some clicks, movement happening in the machine. So after all that processing time, you're probably gonna see a screen like this summarizing your session. You're gonna hit continue. Uh, then the machine will thank you. 
So every vehicle is different. A lot of CCS vehicles will have a charger unplug button or you might have an unlock button on your key fob like the Volkswagen ND4, but make sure your car is unlocked. You've pressed all the unlock buttons that if you have any on your uh, charging door. The state session has been ended on the machine. You should be ready to disconnect. So with CCS, you just press the top of this cable and you'll hear a click and then you should be able to remove it. Now, sometimes it takes some force. Um, these cables are super stiff. I'm not a fan of them. Uh, then close the charging flap on your vehicle close your charging door, and then simply return it back into the uh, cable holder. And we're all set to go. All right, you're charging, you made it this far in the video, time for some nerd talk. So station selection. Um, if you wanna get into being a good EV citizen, it's important to note that these stalls are not all the same, they provide different levels of power. So today, we have a Chevy Bolt, right? A lot of cars, uh, the most common ones being Chevy Bolt, BMW i3, Nissan Leaf, um, they charge slower, they're just older, slower cars. So if you know your car's charging limit, like you know it's one of these cars, um, then you can feel totally fine plugging into like we have today, a 100 kilowatt station. Station. These are pretty common. They're kind of lower power in terms of direct current fast chargers. But at this EVgo installation, you can see that there's a super high power 350 kilowatt uh, station. So these stations are more suitable for uh, newer EVs, you know, your Rivians, your Ionic 5s, your Lucid Airs, much more kind of expensive newer cars. So if you have one of those cars and you pull into these stalls, great. Uh, but if so there are several stalls available and you have one of those older, slower charging cars. The courteous thing to do is just to use the slower, smaller charger. Another thing I want to mention about charging habits is only charge to what you need. Because let's say these stations get busy, um, you're going to save yourself time and everyone else time by taking advantage of the charging curve where your vehicle charges quicker when it's closer to empty than it does as it gets full. So you'll know your needs best, but only charge to what you need. That's my recommendation. So EVgo uses a really cool technology called AutoCharge. They brand it as AutoCharge Plus. But if you are one of the lucky uh, people with an electric vehicle that's eligible for it, we'll put a list up of very common ones right here on screen right now. Um, but if you have one of these vehicles, in this case, the Bolt we're driving today is one of them, then you're eligible for AutoCharge. So you're gonna hit the hamburger menu right on the EVgo app, and you're gonna go into vehicles. And under vehicles, you'll see, right, EVgo Auto Charge Plus. So Ryan's already added his bolt in the app. If your vehicle is not in the app yet, you're gonna have to hit this plus and enter the um, vehicle insurance number, the VIN. So find that on your vehicle. You can enter that in there, then add it. So we're gonna select the bolt, and then we'll see that we can just request to enroll because we're eligible. So we'll request to enroll with our vehicle. We do have to verify the VIN. So find your car's VIN again. I'm gonna enter it manually because I've got it copied on my clipboard. But uh, enter your VIN from wherever it is on your car and then hit add VIN. The request is successful. So now all we have to do, we could have done this process at home by the way, it can be anywhere, but all we've gotta do now is just initiate a charge with the app. So we showed that earlier in this video, but let's do it again. So we're gonna select a charging station. In this case, we're already here. So Lark Ridge Shopping Center. We're gonna select good old Myrtle, because Myrtle is the label right there. We know that's the right station. So we're gonna select Myrtle CCS because the Bolt is a CCS vehicle. And now we're ready. So Auto Charge Plus, we've got this prompt. Yes, we wanna enroll and start charging. So now we have just about 60 seconds to plug in the car. So let's do that now. If you wanna play Mission Impossible music, up the suspense, that's totally up to you. You'll hear that click, and now on the app, it's enrolling in Auto Charge Plus. And what's going on here is Ryan just got an email on his phone, so you're gonna get an email to your account. Auto Charge Plus is set up, and why am I so excited? I love Auto Charge Plus. We're gonna demonstrate how it works. So basically, this means from now on, because your car is registered with their system, all you've gotta do is pull up to these stations and just plug your car in and it communicates with the network, you're billed automatically, you don't have to do any of the stuff we showed you earlier in this video. So if your car has Auto Charge Plus, if this process goes smoothly, then you're in luck. So honestly, I'm so excited to see this. Teslas have done this for a while on their charging network, but this is really one of the first times we're seeing it happen with CCS. And look at that, the vehicle's charging, we are enrolled in Auto Charge Plus. So now in the future, we don't have to do any rigmarole with the app, with a card, we're good to go in the Bolt. Super cool.
All right, so I'm super excited. We get to see if Auto Charge Plus works. Now, I have to be honest here. We actually tried this off camera on these two stalls and it's not working at this station. Javier and Dahl, those two named chargers let us down, but I think Martel's gonna work. Uh, so let's get the CCS cable, the handle ready and just connect into our car. Remember it's enrolled in Auto Charge Plus. So now I think theoretically, this bolt will take a few seconds. You hear the ding. Uh, because it's a bolt, we know that it's gonna—it's starting the charging from this orange light. Uh, and let's see if this works, uh, if things start happening. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Payment authorized. We did nothing, nothing. I didn't, ha I didn't have to tap an Apple card or any kind of credit card here. I didn't have to start through the app. It just knows the bolt and presumably it's gonna bill Ryan's card. It's connecting the vehicle. Let's see, does it start charging? It might seem like it's taken a while, but it's no slower than any of the other authentication methods. Bam, it's successful. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I'm so excited. So road trips with like Tesla style, where you just plug in and go where possible, at least at EVgo with Auto Charge Plus. I should mention Electrify America has plug in charge or that's a standard too. There's some other implementations of this we're hopefully gonna see get done in the near future, but that's Auto Charge Plus. I'm glad we got to demonstrate that. Oh, I'm so excited. That's so cool. All right. I hope everything went well for you with charging. If anything went wrong, well, there is a support number for EVgo. We're gonna put that down right here in the video. So pause the video, read that, or look in the video description. You can call them. Hopefully everything went well, but we will have a troubleshooting video on this channel later. We're also gonna have other videos on charging and let us know the content you'd like to see. You could just got an EV, you're confused, you have lots of questions, we're here to answer them. So let us know at Add a Spec Guide. I've been Max, thank you so much for watching.